Moaning Lisa is one of the most interesting episodes in all of The Simpsons. I think it might be the most interesting, but I don't know if that's a hot take I really want to defend. They've done a lot of quote-unquote interesting shows, after all. I've always admired this episode because of its super minimalist plot. This is an episode all about conveying an emotion. That's it. It's not necessarily about the things that actually happen to Lisa that is important. The focus is always on this general feeling, this general malaise. Just look at that opening shot. The dullness, the emptiness of Lisa just staring there. It's interesting how they construct this episode, in that they don't go for the typical plot of something bad happens and then Lisa gets depressed. They do this kind of story a lot in the series, it's a very logical framework. They frame this one almost like it's an existential depression. Lisa going through her nihilistic moment of wondering if it matters if she's alive, or contemplating the misery of the world. Early Simpsons sometimes had this weird existential bent to it. Reminds me a lot of Bart's big questions in that first Tracy Ullman short. Moaning Lisa is cool in how it demonstrates how sadness and depression can kind of wash over someone. How it affects Lisa's relationships with others. She creates this kind of loop of denying a muffin for herself, which further bums her out, which leads to more of these sad muffin situations. This episode is smart in demonstrating how Lisa does have a lot of external reasons to be unhappy, however. If it was all existential, it might come off as, why is she so emo for no reason? Mr. Largo is obviously pretty terrible toward her, and we see later her classmates talking about how unpopular she is. The scene with Homer complaining about her saxophone is kinda heartbreaking, especially as she offers to practice her fingering silently. This scene is obviously sad, but to the writer's credit, they have Homer also show empathy toward his daughter. This is season one Homer, who actually does have some grace still. The main thing with him is that it's interesting how he doesn't empower her in this scene. He just kind of accepts her peacekeeping solution. He doesn't confront why she is so miserable. Lisa is tacitly reaching out right here for help, and Homer completely fumbles the ball. Homer's very complacent, very go with the flow. This episode is Lisa's big coming out story as a musician. It really taps into what her saxophone means to her. I really enjoy the angle that both of her parents not really fully understand what her music means to her. Her dad finding it annoying, and then her mom cutting her jam session short. This scene is absolutely gorgeous, by the way. Love the giant fluorescent blue moon, the quiet ambiance of Lisa seeking out that music, the facial expressions and acting of both Lisa and Bleeding Gums Murphy. They do a nice job presenting Bleeding Gums as someone who doesn't necessarily have some sort of magical answer. He doesn't just swoop in and immediately solve her problems for her. He immediately states that the blues aren't necessarily about making yourself feel better. But he, and music in general, provides Lisa an outlet for her to express herself. He accepts Lisa for who she is and how she is feeling, even if she doesn't really have any real problems. I absolutely love how Marge whisks her away and then quickly apologizes. Nothing personal, I just fear the unknown. That's the kind of line that makes me love Marge as a comedic character. It's just such a Marge thing to say. So apologetic, but still so set in her ways. Perfect. Marge's character writing in particular is a huge standout in this episode, probably just as interesting as Lisa's, to be honest. She really is the one who is trying to do something about Lisa's sadness. I like that they gave her that scene with Bart, where she encourages him to just be nice to her. They're showing both a thoughtfulness for Marge, as well as demonstrating that Bart actually does care about his sister. He doesn't necessarily know what to do, but Bart does give it the old college try. Good for him. Sucks for Mo, but good for him. Speaking of which, his B-plot with Homer, it's solid enough. Not the most memorable B-plot in the world, I suppose. I mean, it's barely a subplot at all. But it is an important one in balancing the tone of this episode. I kind of like the idea of Homer and Bart getting competitive over a video game. The way they taunt each other is very endearing and also believable. They're smart in that they don't devote a lot of time to this, as honestly, where is this plot really gonna go? But they do have a lot of fun embarrassing Homer by sending him to the arcade and stuff. I always wonder why this kid never really stuck around. 
He has a cool design and personality. He could have been a good addition to the show. Maybe he's too similar to Bart? I don't know. The only thing I really remember him from was the first level of the arcade game. Anyway, back to Marge again. This is a rare episode where we get that peek into her background. Specifically, her relationship with her mother. To be honest, this is probably the most compelling angle of the episode for me. I find it really interesting, the concept of how bad decisions or bad values instilled from previous generations can have lingering effects on future ones. You see shows like BoJack Horseman examine this to, well, a severely devastating effect. Marge's mom's outlook on smiling is pretty screwed up. The concept of always smiling so people know how good of a mommy she has. You can tell this really got instilled within Marge as a result. Because later on, here's what she tells Lisa in the car. I'm gonna do the full quote here because this is kind of the crux of the final act. It doesn't matter how you feel inside, you know. It's what shows up on the surface that counts. Take all your bad feelings and push them down, all the way down, past your knees, until you're almost walking on them. And then you'll fit in, and you'll be invited to parties, and boys will like you, and happiness will follow. Like, this is obviously extremely messed up. The fact that Marge thinks this is initially good advice is kind of horrifying. It really demonstrates how much of a repressed personality she really does have. No wonder she goes on to shoot Mr. Burns, huh? The episode takes an interesting stance in that sadness on its own can lead to more sadness. But also that repressing sadness is even worse. You can't just walk around with a vacant smiling face. I think this episode has a lot to say about family acceptance and how people reach out to each other. I gave Marge a lot of crap about that bad advice earlier, but it's clear that, unlike her husband, she's trying to proactively do something to help Lisa. We have to give Marge a lot of credit for recognizing how wrong she actually was, turning around that car immediately. Just telling Lisa, if you want to feel sad, then feel sad. Accepting Lisa for how she feels and letting her work through it. Like this kind of support is really what Lisa wanted. I don't think moaning Lisa works if you don't have these Homer and Marge scenes for comparison. It does an excellent job at demonstrating how people, in their own little ways, respond to this kind of situation. And it manages to do this without vilifying anyone. You really get a sense that everyone is trying their best. Well, except for a proto Ralph Wiggum. He's kind of an asshole. I do think the jokes are pretty weak, even by season 1's lower standards. It does have some memorable ones, like the boxing stuff and Maggie's joke with the TV. But this is probably one of The Simpsons' most drama-focused episodes. You could probably throw this one into the dramedy category, to be honest. It's kind of like the Raging Abe Simpson episode, as this random one-off that doesn't quite fit in with the other examples. It's a sort of evolutionary dead end in terms of its overall tone. I wouldn't classify it as one of The Simpsons' best episodes or anything either, but I would say that it's criminally underrated and a standout from season one. The episode really did lay the groundwork for Lisa's character for later. It's actually kind of weird if you think about it from a character arc perspective, how they opened with the super depressed story instead of building up to it. This kind of feels like a season seven story, to be honest. But it's set up, right from the get-go, that there is a little sadness within Lisa as a character. It's the great-granddaddy of those Lisa sympathy romps that they love to do so much. For better or for worse. Some people really hate Lisa sympathy romps. And at the very least, it has a lot of great blues music too. Thanks, Bleeding Gums. Now, I wouldn't have wanted the show to go down such a melancholy road. It's good that they got more comedic afterwards. But for a season one experiment, I think Moaning Lisa is totally interesting and iconic, even today. If you ever do a rewatch of the early days of the show, seek this one out. It is unlike any other episode they have done. <laughs>